So guys, welcome back. Now we have stepped into the second portion of this section. That is we will going to discuss the mechanism behind procedure return. And we will also discuss the role of these three registers in case of procedure returns. So we will continue with the example which we discussed in case of procedure call. Here you can see that we have the same three functions function f1 call function f2 and function f2 call function f3 right so let us say that function f3 has completed its execution and now function f3 wants to return right so when function f3 returns then function f2 will resume its execution from the instruction where it left last time right so you can see that when function f3 returns then the function f2 should resume its execution from the very next instruction followed by a call to the function f3. So just assume that in function f2 after the function f3 call returns there may or may not be any instruction for execution in function f2. But in this case it really doesn't matter we will discuss the mechanism that when function f3 terminates or returns how stack memory occupied by function f3 is freed and how function f2 which is the caller of function f3 restore its state from where it can resume its execution so at the moment when function f3 returns the value of base pointer register was 36 right so 36 is the address which was stored in base pointer register right and the content of EIP register will obviously the address of return instruction in function F3, right? And of course the stack pointer will store the address which is the bottommost address of the stack memory. So here you can see that stack pointer points to the bottommost address of the stack memory. In other words, it is a top of the stack memory. So when function F3 returns, then function f2 has to resume its execution right so stack frame of function f3 has to be popped out of the stack in other words we need to destroy the stack frame of the function f3 from the stack memory also value of stack pointer register should be restored to 52 right so here you can see that when the stack frame of the function f3 will be completely destroyed the bottommost address of the stack memory will be address 52 therefore the stack pointer register must be updated to store the address 52 before the function f2 resume its execution and not only that the value of base pointer register should be restored to 60 right and now we know the reason that why the value of base pointer register has to be restored to 60 right the reason being that when function f2 resume its execution function f2 must be in a state that it can access all its arguments and local variables using base pointer register and finally the value of instruction pointer register should be restored to point to the address which executed last in the function f2 that is it should restore to 2004 so let us discuss how to achieve these three goals step by step 